Hello everyone, welcome to Techno Sapiens. In this lecture, I am going to tell you what is polar moment of inertia. Polar moment of inertia is uh, basically the resistance to bending. Now suppose you have a plate like this, okay, this or, or a beam like this. You have put your Cartesian coordinate system at this point where this is, is this direction is x direction this is your y direction and this is your z direction this direction upward is your a y direction this is your uh, the horizontal axis is your x direction and this is your z direction now if you consider the bending about your, your x axis this will give you the second moment of area about x axis if you consider the bending about y axis which which will be something like this okay if you because your y this is your y uh, sorry this was your y axis so if you consider the bending about your y axis this will give you the second moment of area about y axis now your polar moment of inertia is basically the bending about z axis this is your z axis which is like this which is also the resistance to the to the torsional moment which is uh, or the torsional deformation so this is your uh, this this kind of uh, bending will cause sorry this is your z axis so this kind of bending will cause the basically the resistance to such kind of uh, bending is known as your polar moment of inertia so your polar moment of inertia is your resistance to torsional deformation now suppose this is your same beam which I have sh shown you in the form of a book. This was your x direction, this was your y and this was your z direction. The moment or the bending moment about x direction will give you the first second moment of area about x, uh, x axis. Bending moment about y will give you the second moment of area about y axis and the bending about z axis will give you this moment about z axis will give you the uh, this polar moment of inertia the resistance to such type of bend bending moment is known as polar moment of inertia which is now if you take the this uh, this particular thing over here is the cross section of uh, of the beam i have shown you this uh, basically your beam was actually your beam was rectangular but i have shown it in a form of a square just to make the dimensions more clear so suppose you have a square beam squ square cross sectional beam and this is the cross section of that beam where this direction is your x axis and this is your y axis now in order to calculate the polar moment of inertia what we will do we will take an elemental area which we will call as da this is your elemental area and r this distance shown by this red line is your r r is basically the distance of this elemental area from the z axis this elemental area r is the distance of this elemental area d, del a from the z axis or the z axis so your polar moment of inertia will be given by r square which is the distance of the elemental area d, del a from the z axis so we we this is your area integration sign away and uh, your polar moment of inertia is equal to the area integral r square del a but if you consider this distance x this this distance r it is basically x square plus y square it is basically x square plus y square therefore you can write this equation over here as this equation which says that j is equal to uh, integral x square plus y square del a okay now if you further uh, write uh, this equation in terms of basically this del a what is this del a De this del a is your del x dot del y so if you write del x and del y in place of del a it will be equal to integration of x square del x plus integration of y square del y and this term over here is actually your i x x with or the second moment of area about x axis and this term over, over here is basically giving you the second moment of area about y axis y axis or i y y so in uh, basically your polar moment of inertia can be written as ixx plus iyy 
where i x x is the second moment of area about x axis and i y y is the second moment of area about y axis. Now you can see that again this is a cross section of a beam where the thickness of the beam is t and this uh, width of the beam is l. Okay, The width of the beam is l and the thickness of the beam is t. So according to your previous uh, equation where your po polar moment of inertia was i x x plus i y y. Mind it I have written g 1 over here that, that is because this polar moment of inertia is calculated about this center of gravity of the um, of, 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 of the cross section of this uh, beam. That is because this is the point where your uh, Cartesian coordinate system was kept. This is the point where your Cartesian coordinate system was kept. Now your i x x is equal to l t cube by 12 and your i y y is equal to l cube t by 12. This uh, this thing is very easy. This, this is basically the uh, second moment of area about x and y. So writing this down in this the values of i x x and y y y in the first equation you will get the polar moment of inertia of this uh, particular beam or the, uh, about this cross section as l t cube plus t l cube upon 12. So this is how you are going to calculate the polar moment of inertia. Thank you for watching this lecture patiently and in case you want more such videos or uh, you have uh, some particular topic on which you want this want the video do let me know in the comment section below and if you like the video do give me a thumbs up subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to get the notification every time I upload a new video thank you